there's three really important conversations that you do need to have when you first onboard them and you're going to first start working together. And this is one of those steps that through the whole talk, if you do just these steps, you will, again, you'll be very ahead of the game. So please have these three conversations with your VAs and you will have a lot more success with the VAs that you bring on. So um, I'm sorry, I put that in the brackets there for you. So the first important conversation you want to have is what will I hand be handling and what will you be handling? And this is so important because uh, when I brought on my own VA at first, uh, I was, uh, <laughs> this is embarrassing to say, it was really stupid. Um, I, I brought them on and then two weeks later, I went to Tokyo to see my girlfriend. Uh, I live in Tokyo and London, but we're based in, in DC. Uh, I just haven't been back to DC in a couple of years. Um, but uh, I brought the VA on and then basically two weeks later, I jumped ship to the other end of the world. Um, and I wasn't very clear with their duties versus my duties. I basically threw a task at them and said, oh yeah, this is your duty now, by the way, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, I did it in a more polite way than that, but that's essentially at the core of what I was doing. Uh, and so they were confused on what, who, who their duty was and what my duty was. And so just be very specific about whose duties are whose, because you want them to be able to take personal responsibility for that duty and that role and allow them to grow into that, to bring the quality of work to each role that they do. So be specific about the phones or the scheduling or the emails. You're gonna handle the marketing and sales. You're gonna handle the emails. They're gonna handle the phone calls. They're gonna handle the teams. Just be really specific about what you hate and what you want them to do. And it's just crucial to do that from day one. So actually write out a specific list of what you will do and what they will do. Not just what they will do, actually write out for yourself what you are gonna do during the day. So that's the first big conversation to have. And the second is just how do you communicate best? So communication styles is a whole nother talk that we could have, but uh, to keep it really basic, uh, just be consistent with how you communicate and choose how you're gonna communicate together because you are virtual, you're not sitting next to each other. So is it gonna be by phone, by text, by email, by Skype? Be specific about how you're actually gonna communicate together. Uh, the way we do it at ThinkMades is, is uh, sorry, um, the way we do it at ThinkMades, I just wanna jump back to the first point because there's something I need to add. So uh, I also batch my tasks at different times. So uh, my VAs will charge cards at 9 a.m. Uh, and they will also uh, you know, do follow-up calls at 9 a.m. And then they'll put calls at hold, you know, uh, cards on hold at 4 p.m. So we actually batch the tasks at different times throughout the day as well. Um, but with communication, what we do at ThinkMades is depending on the size of the task, we have a different mode of communication. So if it's just a really quick two to five minute task, that needs to be done uh, that one of us hasn't got around to yet, we'll post it in the WhatsApp group that we have, and then whoever sees it first will take care of it. Um, if it's a bigger task, we have a to-do list that we use, uh, an internal one that I made, um, that you can use uh, for things like uh, wedding promotion, uh, sorry, uh, like a wedding, a house cleaning for a, you know, a couple after their wedding that they're moving into a new house or a spring cleaning promotion. Any important tasks that you have, we put it on uh, the to-do list and then we have a specific order that we get them done in. So uh, for different levels of tasks and their importance, we have a different way of communicating. Uh, going up in level of importance. So establish a way that you're going to communicate and that you're actually going to get the tasks done together so that at the end of the day, you know the tasks have been handled. Uh, and just have a weekly meeting as well. Just Even if it's five minutes, even if you have nothing to talk about, just jump on for five minutes for a weekly meeting and just discuss what you're going to do next week and what the focus is going to be for next week. But have a weekly meeting to discuss everything. Um, this is something I'm really bad at personally. I don't check into my cleaning company for, for you know, weeks at times. I, I really don't, uh, I'm really so uninvolved. I really don't work any time in my cleaning company anymore. It just runs itself. But because of that, I, I'm sometimes lazy about meeting with my manager. And so having a weekly meeting is really useful to stay involved in your company without, you know, without doing the work yourself and having your manager uh, know that they can go over important issues with you. So communication is just the second important conversation to have. Uh, and the last one is really just what we call the uh -oh protocol, which is how we handle tough situations. So if there's uh, an emergency situation, have a small SOP for that. Uh, if there's a team issue or a customer issue or a scheduling issue that's, that's really blown up, have an SOP for those things. So uh, if there's an emergency, like uh, someone dies, you know, or someone's in the hospital or, or something really bad happens, have an uh-oh protocol that your VA can initiate when that happens.